Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our YouTube live video or channel, uh, Trending Thursday. My name is Glenn Tompkins, Senior Instructor here at VectorVest. My pleasure to be here. Want to say hello to everyone. Hopefully you had a good week prior from last week to this week. And if you want to chat in the room to let me know you're here, by all means, please do. That lets me know that you can hear me and that Joey is not messing up anything on the other side. So, Joey, say hi. Hi. That is my producer. He's my right-hand guy. Actually, he sits on the right-hand side of me. And he is the guy that makes sure that everything is working in the background. So when you say hello or something, it lets him know that everything is working and he can see what needs to be done and all that kind of stuff. So let's see who's here. Jay is here. Uh, Claude is here. Good afternoon, Claude. Tom is here, which is Badger. Do know. What does that mean? Don't know. Do know? I don't know. Anyway, but that's Tom. He's out in the sticks somewhere. Way, way out. He's got goats and everything, but he's way out there. But he helps us out, and we appreciate that. Good afternoon, Marie. Now, Marie says, hey, Glenn, what's up? Lost some monies in my bullpen expiration Friday. And it looks like, um, looks like the market might not recover by Friday. So it looks like you had options on something and it's not working out. So, we'll, you know, when we get to the end and we look at some of your individual stocks, we can take a look at that. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, Joff is here. Roger is here. Good afternoon, Roger. John is here. Uh, good afternoon, Glenn and Joey, and Jake, also Brian, is here as well. Hello to my Vector Vest buddy. So you guys can actually talk to each other. Um, so let's get right into it. Um, Trending Thursday, what is it all about? On Trending Thursday, we look at what's going on in the news. We look at some of the stocks that are making headline news. Uh, we look at some of these stories just in general that are uh, affecting the economy, affecting the market. We analyze them in the Vector Vest software. And that's what we do, all right? So I want to cover a couple of things. You know, my name is Glenn Tompkins, Senior Instructor here at VectorVest. Coming up on 16 years of being here. So glad to be able to do this for as long as I have been. For those of you who may be new, it would be appreciative if you comment, like, and subscribe. And if you've been here for a while and you already have not done that, please do that. And don't forget to hit the icon for the little bell for the notifications so that you get notified when the next video will be shown. Don't forget to show some love to our Facebook videos as well. We do a Facebook Live every Thursday at 11 o'clock, which showcases our mobile app. Everybody who is a subscriber to the software has access to the mobile app, gives you the opportunity to do what you need to do on the go. And again, all of the trades that you do, you can use our mobile app to, to look at stocks that you may be thinking about, to manage your portfolio, to find new stocks. Everything that you can do in regards to making trades or making better trades can be done on the mobile app. And again, we do a video to support that app every Thursday at 11 a.m. done by Patrick France. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is next Wednesday, next Wednesday at 2 o'clock, we have our next installment of the Hot Stocks panel. And we're going to be talking about Hot Stocks to Swing Trade. Hmm. If you haven't gone to the panels yet, you need to do so. In order to do so, just like you uh, do here, go to the YouTube page, uh, YouTube page, like it, and you can also get the notifications on when the Hot Stock panel is coming up. So those are some things that I needed to take care of in the beginning. And for how many people in here are brand new? Just curious to know. How many people are brand new to the software? If you wish to chat in, please do. And if you don't, that's fine. I just want to get a feel of how many people in this uh, room right now are new. Uh, who's on the swinging panel next week? I believe it's me, Steve Chappell, Jerry D'Ambrosio, and Jim Penna. All right, so there we go. It's it's. We got four top-notch, sorry, four top-level, as Joey makes me say, four top-level instructors that will be there. So just some things that I wanted to cover first off, and we'll go for there. John, you're not new to this. You're, you're still learning 
I'll look at it that way, but you're not new to this. So maybe some of the people who are new didn't want to chat in, and that's fine. I'm okay with that. Roger says, just a couple of months experience. Took the last options class, which I think was an awesome thing to do, which was an awesome thing to do. So, yes, Jake, Jerry will be there. Now, once we get into our, before we get into our stories, we always cover what the market is doing. Because from that perspective, you've got to know what's going on in the market before you pull the trigger on any trade, whether it's a bullish trade or a bearish trade or an option trade, anything. You need to make sure that you're trading along with the market. And VectorVest is very well suited to give you that kind of information. And Joey, I do need to click over here because I've got to click on this for them. You don't need to go. Uh, whatever. All right. Joey's trying to berate me and I'm going to berate back. You got that? Okay, yeah. Don't, you don't want to fight on this. You know this one? No, no. Yeah, I want that one. All right, so we always start with checking out what's going on in the market. Here in VectorVest, this is our homepage. And our homepage is, uh, opens up just like a newspaper, a uh, financial newspaper to help you to know what's going on in the market at any given point in time. So we're going to start off real quick to get a feel of what the market's doing. As I move over, here's our quick list of stocks. And on our quick list of stocks, all of the major indices are down today. You can clearly see that. The Dow is down about a half a percent. The NASDAQ down about six tenths. The S&P down about six tenths. And our vector vest composite down 33 cents to close down right now, almost pushing seven tenths of a percent to the downside. All right, so keeping all of that in mind, today is not a good day to be long in stocks, right? That's what you would think. Let's move over to our daily uh, market timing gauge, which is our daily traffic light into the market. Right now, we are two ticks into the red. The color guard is somewhat bearish. VectorVest does not advocate buying any stocks at this time, which, which goes right in line with what's going on with the quick list of all of the indices. Then down below, we have the color guard. The color guard is our also a traffic light into the market, but it gives us six days worth of data tracking three of our market timing indicators. The price, which is the price movement of the vector vest composite. It is an average indexed arithmetic average of the 8,200 and plus stocks that we track all in one indicator. And we track that price both week over week and day over day. Uh, uh, indicator that's only germane to vector vest, RT. Short, it stands for uh, relative timing on the short term price trend in the market. Cast on a scale between zero and two. When this indicator is above the value of one, the market's in an uptrend. When it's below the value of one, the market's in a downtrend. The higher above one it is, the faster in an uptrend, and the lower below one it is, the faster in a downtrend. Currently, below the value of one, the market currently is in a downtrend. The next indicator, the BSR or buy to sell ratio. Every stock in our database gets a buy, a sell, or a hold recommendation every day. We look at the relationship of buy recommendations divided by sell recommendations. When this indicator falls below the value of one, that means that we have more sell recommendations in the system than buys and the market is showing signs of weakness. We are the only ones in this industry that has a true indicator that looks at the overall health of a market. So looking at the six day view of the movement of the price, the RT and the BSR, we can clearly see we have more yellow lights than anything in this graphic. What does that mean? This is a time for us to slow down in our investing. We do have red lights popping in. We have the primary wave is down, which looks at the week over week movement of the vector vest composite. But the underlying trend of the market or the MTI is above the value of one. So the underlying trend of the market is up. That's how we get a down up situation. The primary wave, which is the fastest indicator we have, is down. But the underlying trend of the market, the MTI, which looks at all three of these indicators wrapped up in one, is still above the value of one. So we have a down up situation. The slowest, most conservative call we have is the confirm call. And we're still currently in a confirmed up call. So you get a lot of great information just looking at the homepage before you do anything else. Before we start to look at our first story, Richard says, have you checked out Bob Turnbull's, uh, Turnbull's presentation from the International Forum regarding trading the TQQQ, the UPRO, and stocks from the Qs and the Spiders? If so, what is your take on this? Um, Richard, I am a big fan of reducing your risk by uh, 
instead of investing in individual stocks to take a look at an indice. But keep in mind, some of these indices that you're looking at or some of these ETFs that you're looking at are triple leverage. Always keep in mind, if you're not well versed in playing on uh, the contras that are, or the, either the contras or the regular ETFs that are triple leverage, you have to be very careful. Looking at the TQQQ, that is a triple leverage bullish ETF on the Qs. So as quickly as you can make money on those is as quickly as you can lose money on those. You have to know how to trade them. The triple leverage ETFs, whether bullish or bearish, are more of a trading tool. All right, so keeping that in mind, I think that you have more, you have less exposure to risk if you invest in an ETF or an indice rather than individual stocks. So that is my take on that. Well, last comments just went somewhere, certainly not here. All right. Um, now, now that you get an understanding of what we're looking at on our homepage, let's look to see what news is affecting the economy. So I'm going to go out to my news stories. Let's go start off with uh, what's going on with, see, Steve, uh, you told me not to push anything else over there. So can I push this right here, Joey? That's not what I told you. I told you don't push anything on the bottom two rows. Oh, the bottom two, two rows. Here. So can I, click, can I click over here? Yes, you can click right here. All right. Wow, really? Really. All right, anyway. So let's talk about what's going on in the economy. What makes economies move? All right, there's three things that move economies globally, earnings, interest, and inflation. All right, uh, the first story talks about consumer confidence jumps as job market outlook improves. As long as the world or the country is fully employed or pretty much close to fully employed, that's always going to bode well for the economy overall. The Conference Board Consumers Confidence Index rose to 131.6 this month from 126.5 in December. That is still overall bullish for the market. Economists polled uh, poll by the Dow Jones expected the consumer confidence to raise to 128 and it rose to 131. So that is definitely a good thing on what's going on uh, with the economy. Something else. Let's go over to another story that I have. White House top economic advisor Larry Kudlow says the economic growth will beat 3% a year this year. That's huge. That is huge. That is a bold move to, uh, to pipe up and say that uh, the GDP, for the most part, will get and beat 3% this year. Um, in quotes here, I'm looking for faster growth. I think we're going to get 3% this year, Kudlow said. The trade deals will help the Fed change policy. That was very, very important. So the Fed, I just saw a story in regards to the Fed. The Fed is actually keeping the interest rate steady. They are not lowering interest rates right now. The economy is doing well. People are working. Interest rates are low. Inflation is right in line. Those are the three things that move markets glo uh, globally. And right now, we're fine. I like the idea, personally, that the Fed is not going to lower any more interest rates right now. Just let the market go. But the, um, the economic growth looks good. Job markets are good. Manufacturing looks good. The market overall has still got a bullish feel. So even with that being said, let's go back into the software and let's go look at two indicators specifically that look at what's going on in the market. I'm going to go to our market timing graph. We've got two indicators that we look at. We look at the market timing graph. Actually, I don't want to do it this way. I'm going to do it a different way. I'm going to go here. And where's my watch list? Do we have my watch list? I don't know if we set up my watch list. We did not. Let's go do it now. Man, my Joey. All right, here we go. Here's the stocks that we're going to look at today, or at least some of them. And two of them that specifically look at the market are the spiders, the SPY, and the vector vest composite. Remember, the vector vest composite looks at the index, the arithmetic average of all of the stocks, over 8,200 of them, on a week over week and day over day basis to look at what's going on. But this is the actual price movement of that indicator right now. I'm going to right click on those two that I highlighted and we're going to view the stock graph. So let's take a look. The vector vest composite overall bullish. What's happening over the last few days though, pulling down. Why? We're going to talk about the news that is affecting the market, but keep in mind, 
What are the three things that drive markets? Earnings, interest, and inflation. And right now, everything, companies for the most part are meeting or exceeding their earnings expectations. Some are missing, but that happens in every earnings cycle. All right, but for the most part, um, a lot of the bigger companies are meeting or exceeding their earnings expectations. And if earnings is the engine that drives a market higher, well, why is it falling? Well, there is some other big news that's affecting the market in an adverse way of which we'll get into. But overall, looking at the things in the economy that are making the market move up, we are moving up. More recent news is affecting the market in a bad way. And again, we'll talk about it. But earnings over the last year, definitely moving higher than it was a year ago. And there's a lot of volume being traded in the market currently at this time. Marie says, I am in SPY uh, iron, iron Condors at 324. Well, let's go look at the spiders. Uh, 324, as long as it stays where you sold the, the lower side of hopefully the 324, what was the higher side uh, on your iron? You got a bull call and a bear put. All right, that means you got all in a bear put. And currently at the 325, you should be fine. The iron condor, the stock has got to stay pretty flat. Be careful when the market's not moving flat or moving sideways, Marie. Maybe a different type of option trade to put on. But right now, if I put this on a three-month graph, it's pretty much for the last four days moving a little bit sideways. So you should be fine on that as well. Just keep your eye on this. Many of us view Cudlow as a contrary indicator, says Richard. Well, you know me, in these sessions, all I'm really talking about is the news, and I'm going to either corroborate the news or debunk the news, one of the two, by way of the VectorVest software. That's all, it's, that's all I'm doing here. So by way of both of these indicators, uh, the market is definitely moving up, but keep in mind, the market's run either on the spiders or on the vector vest composite is long in the tooth. So any bullish trades that you put on right now are a little bit more riskier because the longer or the further away from an initial call, from an initial bottom that you put the trade on, the more riskier the trade becomes. And I'm at a point that uh, the market is looking for a top. Could the top be right here and we could be pulling back for a correction? I don't know that for sure but the market is at a level where it's toppy. Be careful with your long positions that you put on. All right, so I'm gonna close the graph. Those are the two indicators that we're looking at in regards to tracking what's really going on in the market. And now we're going to move on to our next story if there's no more questions. And does anybody have any questions? Before I move on to the next story, um, Kudlow, you can't help but not like the crouchy old son of a gun but he does know what he's, what's going on. You know, I'm not afraid of telling a story just as long as the story is out there and we're gonna use the software to help us out. And there you go, Jake says this stuff really works. Fahad says, I put on the spider with a gain over 50%. Do I wait or take profit? You gotta understand what's your goal. Your goal is to make money. If the market is looking toppy, don't give it all back. All right, don't give it all back. If you're up 50%, you're way ahead of the game. You're in a good situation. Um, and if you don't want to take the trade fully off the table, how about closing half of it and locking in some of the profit? All right, but the choice has got to be yours. Personally, I probably would have taken a profit a little earlier than that to lock in the profit, especially knowing that the market is starting to look at all the toppy. So that is my answer to that, Fahad. All right, let's get into our next story. Our next story is specifically going to talk about 5G. 5G is still a hot subject in the market. And people want to know what's the hottest 5G stocks to get into. Well, I'm going to show you a couple of things. One, there is an ETF that tracks the whole 5G industry. If you scroll down a little bit, it's called FIVG. It launched back in March of 2019 as the first 5G focused them, uh, thematic ETF. So if you want to stay on top of what's going on with 5G, I'm going to show you how to do that. But if you don't want to get into individual stocks in 5G, this may be a beautiful way to track the 5G market with one ticker symbol without having to put more exposure into several stocks. Now, 
something happened this week in regards to 5G by way of the UK. Yahweh allowed limited access, okay, to UK's 5G networks as Britain defies the US pressure. So the US is, is making it so that Yahweh doesn't have access to our networks for the 5G, but you know something? They are the bigger uh, innovators when it comes down to 5G, and at some point in time, I think that everybody is gonna have to work hand in hand in order to get this technology out to us, the, the consumer, the individual. But UK said, you know something? We're gonna allow them that ability, and with that, then we're going to say, we're going to get some more um, insight as to the 5G and how to better use it. The UK government said that Yahweh will be restricted from being involved in sensitive functions in a network of features labeled as core. So they're giving him limited access. Uh, access. There is also a limit in place on how much equipment networks can buy from one high risk vendor for a particular part of the infrastructure known as the Radio Access Network, AKA RAM. The move could strain relations between the UK and US following a campaign by Washington to have the Chinese firm block from as many markets as possible. So with that being said, the UK is spinning off and saying, listen, we want this technology. We're gonna give you limited access to this technology. And you know something? It could be the lead for other countries to do so. And if that happens, then what happens with the US? We don't wanna be the ones out left out in the cold when it comes down to that. So again, I'm giving you some of my own insight, but utilizing the story to let you know exactly what's going on. So. Let's get into the software again. I'll do it this way. And in here, we do have that ETF known as 5G, F-I-V-G. And if I scroll this over a little bit, it is the 5G network uh, ETF. So it's an ETF which looks at the whole 5G industry tracked into one ticker symbol. So I wanna show you something. I'm going to right click. I'm going to view the stock graph Let's go see how hot or not 5G is. Notice back in December of 2019, 2000, 2000, uh, December 2019, the three and the eight, which are two moving averages that we use when we're analyzing a stock, crossed. That was a great opportunity to jump on board with 5G as it ran higher. It hit a high on 122 of 2020 and since then has pulled back. So it looked like 5G was hot for a little bit from December to midway through January. And right now, if you're looking at 5G stocks, it's tough right now because the three and the eight, look at the big, big bars, look at the big bearish bars on 5G as those stocks are being adversely affected. And maybe the decision with the UK and Yahweh could be affecting this in a bad way. Now, that's just the ETF, all right? Overall, what it's doing, but look at the volume on uh, the movement of that ETF, big volume, a lot of people jumping on board with it, but you know something, it may not be the right time. So that is looking at the individual ETF, but how about this? I've got a watch list right here of the 5G stocks. We have a special watch list looking at 5G stocks. It's comprised of 45 stocks. I took those stocks, put them into a YouTube uh, trending Thursday watch list so we can easily get to it. And at any point in time, you can do the same thing. Take the watch list, which is found in the watch list viewer under special watch list. If I scroll down to special watch list, uh, actually it should be overview watch list. Go to the watch list section, go to overview watch list. We did a special presentation on 5G. This is where the stocks were. And all I did was transfer the 45 stocks there into an easily findable watch list right here in Trending Thursday. All right, now out of the 45 stocks, I'm going to be only looking at the top 10. Why? How many of you wanna to have to sift through 45 stocks to find the best 5G stocks to get into. Why not use the power of the VectorVest software to hone in on the best stocks within that watch list? Now, you're gonna also notice that more recently, 
we have a new video on YouTube which talks about the VectorVest fundamentals. And the one that was released this week specifically talked about utilizing value in the VectorVest software. Value is what we feel a stock is worth. It is not a profit target, but it's what we feel the stock is currently worth. And we want you to primarily be in undervalued stocks. Now, because the stock may be overvalued, doesn't make it a bad stock. It just means that people are willing to pay a premium to own the stock. Now, if more and more people are willing to pay a higher price than what the stock is worth, it's going to drive the stock's price higher, thus making it overvalued. So I'm looking at these stocks out of the 45 stocks. I have these stocks now sorted by our master indicator, VST. Let's analyze the first couple. Microsoft, trading currently at 171. It's got a value of $116. The stock is currently over its value, and that just means that people are willing to pay a premium to own the stock. Our other indicators, RV, looks at the stock's long-term price appreciation potential. This indicator is cast on a scale between zero and two, where above one is favorable. It looks at the stock's long-term price um, appreciation as compared to a AAA corporate bond. Microsoft has an RV, above one, favorable. 1.18 says that Microsoft should outperform that AAA corporate bond by 18% over the next one to three years. I'd rather own this stock than that AAA corporate bond. Relative safety, it's an indicator of risk. How risky is the stock? Relative safety looks at the consistency and predictability of a company's financial perform performance. Does this company meet or exceed earnings expectations quarter over quarter, year over year? Companies that meet or exceed earnings are companies that are very attractive to investors. At 1.37, above one, favorable. It is a nice, safe, stock, which tells me when earnings comes out on Microsoft, it's got a higher probability of meeting or exceeding earnings. The next indicator, RT, which is our technical indicator. RT looks at the short-term price trend of the stock. Is the stock in an uptrend or a downtrend? Very simple to see it right from our indicators. RT above one, the stock's in an uptrend. The higher above one it is, the faster in an uptrend it is. So Microsoft, RT, 1.43, the stock is in an uptrend. Good upside potential, good safety, and is in an uptrend. The master indicator VST, which looks at value safety timing, above the value of one at 1.34. And by way of VST, this stock has the best combination of value safety and timing. Let's look at another stock. How about Apple? Analyze it real quick. Trading at 320. Do you know Apple is still coming off of all time highs? Stock is moving. And that's why I say when a stock is over its value like Apple is, it doesn't make it a bad stock. It just means that people are willing to pay more than what it's worth. Now, this is what concerns me though. Upside potential at 0 0.78, below the value of one. So long term, I'm not sure if I really want to hold Apple right now until that RV gets above the value of one. But other things I do like, relative safety at 1.1, uh, 1.4. The stock is a safe stock that continually meets or exceeds earnings. And the stock is in an uptrend at 1.45. It is a buy recommendation. What is hurting it as far as um, that long term upside potential? Look at that it's got an earnings growth rate of negative 2%. You know why? You know how much money they put into launching the Apple TV, uh, the streaming service? They spent a lot of money to do that and that's hurting its growing, uh, hurting its earnings growth, all right? The earnings per share is still sitting at 13% a year, but they're growing it with all of the money that they had to put out for the Apple TV streaming service. It's getting hurt by uh, it's hurting the earnings growth rate. Altogether, I still think the stock is a good stock. Just watch that RV. Long term, there's probably better stocks to look at. I'm going to take this same list of 10 stocks. All right? I want you to watch the stocks. What if I want to find the safest stocks in 5G? Sort this list by RS. Simply click on that column and watch the stocks change. Now, instead of just looking at the stocks that have the best combination of value, safety, and timing, I'm still utilizing the power behind the VectorVest software, the stocks that have the best consistency and predictability of company financial performance, the companies that have the highest potential 
of meeting or exceeding their earnings expectations. Google is now at the top of the list. It's one of the safest stocks out, or is currently the safest stocks out of the 45 stocks that are 5G stocks. So if you're looking to get into 5G, use the power of force ranking by way of our indicators to hone in on the types of stocks that you're looking at. Skyworks has got a good safety. Micron, good safety. Intel, NVIDIA, Apple, Microsoft was number one as far as the value, safety, and timing, but it's number seven as far as safety, still within the top 10 out of 45. Let's take this one other step different. All right. Um, Let's see, CMCSA, keep in mind, you're talking about CMCSA. I'm not sure that that is a 5G stock. Um, and you, you know something, real quick, if I take this and look at all of them, let's go see if CMCSA, remember that's a cable company, Joff. That is a cable company, but I'm gonna sort it by symbol so we can look at all 4, uh, 45 stocks. CMCSA is not here as a 5G company, Joff. All right, it doesn't look like it's here as a 5G company. Remember, these are all companies that are included for um, uh, in 5G. CMCSA, you're the one that gave it to me. I gave that to you probably as part of the streaming wars, Joff. I know that I've used Comcast as far as the streaming wars. All right, so I'm just keeping that in mind. Uh, with the right entry, you can make a ton of money with Apple, especially with options. I don't disagree with you, but being able, I'm going to move this back to 10, being able to look at some of the best stocks by any one of our indicators in 5G is a great way to make money. So there you go. All right. So that is the story on 5G, but hopefully we've opened up some doors to hone in on the types of stocks that you're looking at within the 5G. Let's go sort this one last time by RT. What's the fastest moving stocks in this field? Shot Spotter. Who knows that stock? I don't know that stock, but there it is again, price to value. The stock is overvalued. Doesn't make it a bad stock, but in this case, look at that, way overvalued. Upside potential, not there. Safety, not there. The only thing that's moving this stock right now is the RT. The RT looks at the, uh, the short-term price trend. This is a trade. So even in the 5G, looking at the stocks sorted by RT, this is strictly a trade um, because RT is as high as it is. I do love the earnings growth rate. They are growing their earnings at a clip of 44% a year. I like that about the stock. All right, so no matter what types of stocks you're looking for within 5G, use the power of the software to hone in on the best type, whether it's by safety, by timing, by value, however you want. All right, any questions? Uh, Job says, you were right as usual in Streaming Wars watch list. You got it, man, that's all. Anybody got any questions? All right, going once, going twice, three times sold. All right, let's get to my next story. Marijuana stocks, the next story, hot stocks as well. Everybody's trying to find out if it's the right time to be in marijuana stocks as well. Here's a story that looks at the top 10 marijuana stock news stories of the week, and it breaks them down. So instead of just reading all of the stocks that are here, like BILZF, MN, that's a whole lot of letters, um, ACB, very widely known stocks, CGC, Alfria. Here's a lot of the stocks that have hit the news um, as far as marijuana is concerned. So I'm going to do this. Let's go use the power of the software again. First thing I want to do is I want to look at, go back to my trending Thursday for today, which is 130-2020, right? I have an ETF for marijuana as well. It's called MJ. Get that? How about that? For marijuana ETF, looks at all of the marijuana stocks in one exchange traded fund. Let's right click on it. Let's go view the stock graph. So this is the marijuana industry. And I'm wondering why it's so hot for everybody to know, man, marijuana is getting ready to rock and roll. I got to get into it. I got to get into it. Well, I'm looking at an ETF that tracks all of the marijuana stocks in one ticker symbol. Is anybody out there really really digging, want to get into marijuana right now? This is the story. All right, so I know marijuana stocks are still hot and heavy as far as a trend. This is trending Thursday. 
But this is where the power of the VectorVest software comes in. So you don't get pulled in to all of the gibble gobble. You like that word, gibble gobble? No? You don't get pulled into all the gobbledygook. You like that word better? You don't like that either? You don't get pulled into the quagmire. You like that word? The quagmire of what everybody out there is talking about. Look at that graph. Folks, that's all of the marijuana stocks in one ETF. You make your story. You make your story. You make, look at that. All right, so we can look at the stocks. Overall, the industry, the ETF is moving down. All right, let's do this. You want to look at marijuana stocks individually. You say, well, you know, that's good and all, but I can make some money on some of those marijuana stocks. Well, let me show you how to find the best marijuana stocks if you have the intestinal fortitude to be that aggressive. I have a watch list in here specifically for pot. Now I click on that and let's go see how many stocks are in here. There's 207 stocks in our marijuana watch list. I'm gonna look at the top 10 again because I wanna help you discern instead of looking at 207 stocks, why not use the power of the VectorVest software to hone in on some of the best ones, starting with VST, the stocks that have the best combination of value, safety, and timing. At the top of the list is GRWG. Well, let's talk about the price and value. Remember, I'm highlighting value this week. The stock's price is trading at $4.97 with a value of $4.63. This close in price and value, we're going to call this stock fairly valued. Now, let's go to RV, the upside potential of the stock. Above one, nicely above one, this stock, this lower dollar stock should outperform a AAA corporate bond by 41%. So I won't mind owning this stock for a value play. Relative safety is 0.82. This is not that safe of a stock. When earnings comes out, it's probably got a lower probability of meeting or exceeding earnings. And again, the engine behind the stock's price move is earnings. Earnings good, stock goes up. Earnings bad, stocks go down. Now, another thing, I may not like the safety, but is the stock moving up in price right now? RT tells me that it is. So it's got good upside potential. It's moving up in price right now. Something tells me that when this stock comes out, if I'm trading this stock and I know when the earnings comes out, I might want to take this trade off the table when earnings comes out because it's got a lower probability of meeting or exceeding earnings. With all of that being said, it's got a relative, it's got a recommendation of a buy recommendation. That's because the stock's in an uptrend. It grows its earning at a clip of 39% a year. It's got 21 cents of earnings per share. So from the best combination out of the 207 marijuana stocks, this is the stock that's got the best combination of value, safety, and timing. For those of you who are looking as a means to still get into marijuana stocks, put this on your list. I remember though, I looked at the industry, the ETF of the, of the whole industry, it doesn't look good. But if you still want to play that, at least I'm giving you the opportunity to know what's good as far as the best way to go. Notice that out of the 10 stocks here, how about two of them have VSTs below one? All right, and these are, and they got good upside, but look at a lot of these. So I can understand from the perspective of a value perspective, nine out of these 10 stocks have RVs above one. So all you're really looking for is the right opportunity for the industry to grow up. And once it goes up, you've got some hot stocks to take a look at right here. All right, let's change this up a little bit. Let's look at some of the safest stocks. If you're going to play this industry, why not pay the industry with some of the safest stocks? And look at that. Man, none of my safeties in this list is above the value of one. So the whole industry, the whole industry is below the value of one of safety. Most of these stocks will not, will not meet or exceed earnings. And there's Jay said he got creamed on Cron. I'm telling you, just be careful with these stocks. Um, Lisa said, took a bath on OGI. OGI was rocking and rolling when it did, right? And you know something, because looking at that ETF MJ, Lisa, you could have had a better way of knowing that that upward move was going to be a short-term move.
How about that? That's the power of looking at that ETF to make that kind of decision. And that's right. As Jake would say, man, this stuff really works. This is the power of delving into these stories that are trending and that are making the news with the VectorVest software. You have the power to make better decisions. All right, let's go sort this by the stocks that have um, the best relative value. What's at the top of the list? Neptune. Some of these stocks that have good upside potential may not be doing that good right now, but these are good value plays that when, how about this Neptune Wellness? Undervalued. How about uh, True Leaf Cannabis? Undervalued. A lot of these stocks that we're looking at by way of relative value, value plays, most of them are undervalued. Wow, GWPH though is way overvalued. It's got good upside potential. Remember, we sorted this by the stocks that have good upside potential. If you're looking for marijuana stocks for a value play, look at these earning growth rates. Man, these companies are doing a great job. The industry is hurting these stocks. Look at the RTs. Many of them are below one. Many of these stocks are in downtrends. But when it comes time for the, uh, for, for the market, uh, for that industry to move up, here's some of the best value marijuana stocks to take a look at. Wow. All right. So that's the marijuana stocks. Anybody got any questions? How about waiting until it's fully legalized or close to? Because a lot of money could be left on the table for HOD, which is why I like looking at that industry, that, that ETF, MJ, because it'll get you in at the right time. All right, this stuff really works, says Jake. There you go. Birds of a feather flock together. Man, you guys are using a lot of stuff that I talk about. That means you must be listening. All right. No more stories on cannabis. I like that we have the watch list here that we can sort by any of our major indicators. And remember, we're looking at 207, but only concentrating on the ones sorted by our indicators. Um, Jim says, made good money trading IIPR. Uh, nice dividend yield. There's another way to go. It's got the highest dividend yield in this list right here. I hear you on that. So it pays a dividend, pays a $2.83 dividend on a $93 stock. That may not be a bad play. The dividend safety though, Jim, nobody else will show you this. The dividend safety is not that good. Just be careful on it. You made your money. That's a good thing. Just be careful. Isn't MJ in a downtrend? The answer to that, yes, it is, John. But this is for the purposes of the people who are still on board with trying to make some money in the marijuana stocks. All I'm doing is showing a different way of, of trying to get into it. All right. When you talk, we listen. EF Hutton. You remember the EF Hutton commercials? When EF Hutton talks, everyone listens. Oh, that's right. Ninja stock. I remember that's what it was. Well, we can't do that no more. Ninja move. Yeah, I don't know that. I don't know EF Hutton. You don't remember? You're too young to remember EF Hutton. Lisa, he doesn't know. He's too young. All right. Let's move on to our next story. The next story is why the market is moving down. Remember, we looked at all of the other things that are making the market moving up. Jobs are good. Growth is good. All trade deals are happening all over the place. But what's helping the market to move down right now? And this is big news. Coronavirus may hit China economy harder than SARS warns no more. This is what's hurting the market. This is more of a news-driven market right now. Remember when we looked at the equity curve of the VectorVest composite and the SPY, how the market was running, and then all of a sudden it ticked down? This is why the market is ticked down. This is more of a news-driven market right now. So let's scroll down a little bit. Economists began to lower growth assessments for China. So now, not only is the, norm, uh, the coronavirus affecting people, it is now affecting the Chinese growth of um, um, their economy. Amid the quickly spreading cor uh, coronavirus outbreak, with Nomura analysts warning that the worst has yet to come. So I'm not trying to be doom and gloom. This is the story that's out on Market Watch talking about the coronavirus. Based on our study, the coronavirus characteristics and Chinese government responses thus far, we reckon the coronavirus could deal a more severe blow to Chinese economy in the near term relative to SARS 
in 2003, said a team led uh, by Ting Lu at Nomura in Note to Clients. How about this? Right now, the death toll of the virus, 170. How about 7,700 people have been infected by it? The global equity markets tumbled on Thursday as investors nervously awaited the outcome of an emergency world health health organization meeting where officials will determine whether an international emergency needs to be declared, declared over the virus. So last week I talked about it. This week I'm talking about it again because now it's affecting their economy. But wait, there's more. What I've done is I've created a watch list in the software, in our YouTube videos and in the software for the coronavirus coronavirus stocks. These are medical pharmaceutical companies that could help in aiding the, 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 the creation of a cure. Notice this stock right here. You guys have seen this stock, nanovirusides, up 27% today. This stock has been on a run. Let me right click on it real quick just so that you can see it. This stock has been rocking and rolling since the coronavirus came out. Look at this, up, a little bit down, but look at the three and the eight, even on the pullback right here, the three and the eight are solid. This is a positive play to play in regards to the coronavirus. Now, I want you to look at some of the, um, in this, uh, the, uh, the in, uh, look at some of the stuff that's here, how about that? All right, price and value. Many of these stocks, because they're pharmaceutical stocks, will be overvalued. Do you understand why uh, pharmaceutical stocks are overvalued? Because a lot of these companies put a lot of work into research and development where they're not growing their earnings. They put a lot of money into research and development to get the drugs to the FDA to possibly get them released. Where do they make their money? After the drug is released and it's approved. Any of you really wonder why drug prices are up as much as they are? They have to recoup a lot of the money that they put out into making these drugs. Notice that a lot of these have negative earnings growth rate. Some of them have positive and that's good but many of them have negative growth rates, all of them, with the exception of one. So nine out of the 10 have negative earnings. And that is because they are spending so much money and nobody realizes that. We all talk about how expensive the drugs are, but this is the reason why the drugs are as expensive as they are. They're trying to recoup. These companies are not making money but they're making drugs, right? They're making the drugs that are out there. What about the fact that the U.S. runs over 60,000 flu deaths per year? That's a viral infection too, and China has got a lot larger pool of folks to pull from. So you know why a lot of those flu deaths are coming from per year? And it's not, a, it's in, whether it's an epidemic or not, we have a, a, um, a shot for it. A lot of people don't do it. I'm one of them that doesn't do it. Do you do the flu shot, Joey? No, Joey doesn't do it. A lot of people don't do the flu shot, all right? And the people that get affected adversely for the most part, I do believe, are probably going to be the elderly and the children. So, but there is, there is a shot to help you to not get the flu, job. So just keep that in mind. There is a shot to help you to not get the flu. All right, so many of these stocks comparing the price and the value are way overvalued, but that's to be expected. Uh, on these stocks. But if I were looking at these, why not look at the stocks that have the RT above one? All right, the RT above one means that these drug companies are moving up in an uptrend. And then also look at the stocks uh, that are positive for the day. How about GNPX up over 4% today as well? All right, so keeping that in mind, we have a way of at least looking at some of the stocks that could be taking advantage of the coronavirus to make money. Keep your eyes on some of these stocks. I really like that NNVC. Uh, it is grossly overvalued. And a lot of these stocks, the fundamentals are not there. They really are not. But look at the RTs. A lot of them are moving up because they're starting to make money because people are investing in them. All right. What is my next thing to do? Um, let's go look at some of the other stocks in the market that are making news. We'll do this real quick. 
Uber. Uber stock rallies after UBS initiates coverage with bullish rating sees potential for a 54% gain. Keep your eye on Uber. All right, let's go to Lyft, another one. Lyft shares dip on reduction of 1.6% of the workforce. That's bad. All right, so they're pulling back. Shares dipped nearly 2% late trading Wednesday after it mounts 90 layoffs in marketing and enterprise operations out of its 5,500-person uh, workforce. Interesting. So if you own Lyft or you're thinking about Lyft, just keep your eye on that. I got you. We don't do live swing trades in here, Jay. Uh, Jay. Uh, I'm not going to do that just quite yet. And the upper management told me to wait in regard to that. So I'm going to wait on that. Since you mentioned Dr. Delito, I'm wondering who writes the weekly essay after Dr. Delito left. We've got a couple of people here within the uh, company that have been writing along with Dr. Delito in the views prior to his leaving. So that's, uh, we've got some, a couple of people that are doing that for hot. All right, next one. GE beat earnings this week. GE finds its footing and posts strong cash flow. So that's a stock that's rocking and rolling. Boeing, woo! Boeing posts full year loss amid 737 max setbacks. So Boeing still making the news. Boeing is just getting smoked like a, like bad. And then Tesla, Tesla surges after earnings beat vows to sell more than a half million vehicles this year. That is an aggressive number. Half million vehicles this year. So those are some other stocks that are making news. Let me go back into the software real quick. Let's go peep those out. Um, let's go to 130.20. Here we go. Let's go look at boo, 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 Tesla, Boeing, GE, Uber, and Lyft. We'll start off with Tesla, way overvalued. All right, so this stock is clearly overvalued. Again, the perception is that people still are investing it, willing to pay more than what it's worth, but it's got good upside potential. It is a safe stock and it is moving in price and it's got a buy recommendation. Boeing, right in line with its value. So we're gonna call that fairly valued. Upside potential getting weaker. Relative safety getting weaker and right now with all of the bad news about it, the stock is now officially in a downtrend. Looking at General Electric, GE, overvalued. The upside potential, not there. The safety, not there. The only thing that's working for it is since it beat earnings is that it is in an uptrend by way of relative timing. Uber, clearly way over its value. Upside potential, really not there. The only good thing about it is that the RT is above one after it beat earnings. So you can quickly see that no matter what anybody says about a stock, you can determine whether it's a stock that you do want to hold or if it's a short-term play. When you see RT above one, but the fundamentals are not good, that is a short-term play. Lift, clearly overvalued. The fundamentals are not there. The upside or the, the stock is in an uptrend, but not nearly as much as an uptrend as Uber is. All right, and if we look, uh, we don't need to even look at, this, uh, look at the graphs. You can clearly see by analyzing these stocks, which ones are the better stocks. Boeing, you probably don't wanna be in downtrend. Looking at General Electric, RT above one, the fundamentals are not there, that is a trade. Uber, the fundamentals are not there, RT above one, that is a trade. Lyft, the fundamentals are not there, RT above one, that is a trade. All right, with all of that being said, with all of that being said, any questions? All right, and I'm going to give you an opportunity to look at some individual stocks. I'm going to take the first 10 stocks that get shown up in the room. The first 10 stocks, we will analyze them. On your mark, get set, go. Okay, let's go see. Nobody's typing nothing. The less stocks you put in, I ain't got to put them in. So there's one. Thank you, Steve. R-O-K-U. Next one. And if you didn't come today prepared with stocks, then I'm only going to look at what you put in here. DWT for oil, comma, E-N-P-H. That's three. Um, Visa, that's four. T-E-T-C-E-H. That's five. E, no, I don't have that. T-E-T-E-C-H. There it is. That's five. 
Um, EMPH is already there. Boeing, that's six. GSX. Wow, GSX, that's seven. FNF, that's eight. I'm looking for new names. I'm looking for new names. Uh, JNUG, that's nine. I'm looking for new names. Anybody else? Roger, I got yours in there. Michael, I have yours in there. Mr. Consulting, I've got yours in there. And Jay, you're, I'm looking for one other new person to type in uh, a stock, a person that normally never types in. All right, I'm giving you an opportunity. Come out of the, come from being a back, a back church, a backseat Baptist, come up to the front. I want to see anybody else. If not, I'm not going to put another one up. Okay. Jeff, that's a new name. Excellent. A-E-M-D. There we go. And Claude is new. I'm going to take Claude too. J-N-J. All right. That's all the stocks I'm going to look at today. Thank you. All the new people that did come up. I thank you for that. And now we're going to analyze some of your stocks. Roku, put this on a three-month graph. Um, this is a very popular name. What, J? J, it, whatever, J. You're not new. Looking at Roku, a couple of things. Three-month graph. I've got a couple of things on my graph. Support and resistance. I have three and eight exponential moving averages. I have volume along with a moving average of volume. I believe it's a 40-day moving average of volume. And I have earnings per share. Knowing that over the last three months, earnings per share is lower than it was three months ago. Remember, earnings is the engine that drives the stock's price higher, number one. Number two, looking at the trend, looking at lower highs on the stock from the high that occurred here on 11-27 of 2019. So the stock's price is pulling back. The earnings is lower than it was three months ago. Look at the volume. is So even though the stock's price is going down, a lot of, lot of people jumping on board with it. It looks like it could be possibly turning around right now, but I definitely would love to see if the stock can get out of its own way at this level of a resistance at 150.49. All right. If you own it, you need to have a line in the sand to say when to get out of it. I'm going to give you the most recent line in the sand that I can give you, which is at this level of a low. All right. That's probably going to be your line in the sand to get out of the stock on an end of day basis. If the stock's price breaks below there, you probably should be out of the stock. All right. Let's go to the next stock. DWT oil's getting smoked. And this is a great way to play the downside of oil. This is a triple leverage contra ETF of oil. Crude oil, man, this was a good opportunity to get in. And I love this uh, indicator or ETF because it does give me a good feeling of when oil is looking good or looking bad. How about the 388 cross here on 1-8 of 2020? And look at that run. That would have been a good entry. I like that on, and whether it's on gold, whether it's on gas, whether it's on oil, I like some of these ETFs as a, may, as a way of getting me ahead of the curve on some of the trends that are coming out. All right, let's go to the next one. ENPH still looks good. <coughs> Excuse me. Even though the market is pulling back on the coronavirus news, ENPH looks good. Earnings higher than it was three months ago. Um, volume is pretty steady. Nice up day today. Nice open can. A little wick at the top. Um, a little bit of pullback, but not much. The 3 and 8 looks solid, even on the pullback. I like ENPH. Just be careful knowing that the market is at a range where it's looking toppy and starting to pull back because of the coronavirus information. Just be careful with holding your stocks long term. Just be careful with holding your stocks long term. Brian, I got you. All right, Visa, another good looking play. Love the pullback. The 3 and 8 held. Look at the volume, pretty steady keeping at or near that level of the average volume of volume and the earnings per share higher than it was three months ago. I like Visa. This is a, probably a good long-term core holding. I like it from that perspective. Uh, explain the three and the eight moving average concept. So we use two moving averages. Notice that on an end of day basis of which I'm looking at right now, it does a good job of keeping you in on a trending stock. Can I use other moving averages? I sure can. If I use a 10 and a 20 or a 20 and a 50, it's going to take me a lot longer to get out of that stock, giving me an opportunity to give some of that winning away. Notice because these are smaller, closer moving averages, when the 3.8 cross, it's a good opportunity to get out of the stock without giving back too much. I can, <coughs> excuse me, I can again 
change these, Steve, to whatever moving averages I want. But because they are both below 10, they will do a good job. If the moving averages hold, it will do a good job of getting you out at the right time and keeping you in as well. Does that make sense, Steve? So it's moving averages that work. We like and we've done a lot of testing with it. It works. All right. And as I go along these stocks, Steve, when a stock moves sideways, like it does here, moving averages don't work well in a sideways moving um, graph. Then I could use a different indicator, probably like stochastics or RSI, to base me know when to get out when the stock is oversold or overbought. All right. Um, tech, uh, TECH, drug biomedical, pretty much still moving sideways, looking at my support and resistance. Um, big down day today. I'm probably not going to touch this today. Now, you said Visa or MasterCard, Jay. I'm looking at Visa. This is on Visa. This is on Visa. So hopefully, Steve, I did answer your question about the 3 and the 8. I can use any moving averages I want, but for the most part, we like um, the 3 and the 8. Have a good weekend, Lisa. Boeing, definitely in a downtrend. Definitely in a downtrend. And until this downtrend gets broken, I'm not touching it to the upside. Even though the stock trying to make a run, if this downtrend is not broken, I'm not touching it. And how about the earnings per share? A lot lower than it was three months ago. Boeing is just not a good play right now, but that's a lot of the bad news going on with the 737 MAX. Next one, GSX, beautiful equity curve. Today is a down day. Notice that, and this goes back to Steve. Steve, notice here the stock pulled back for two days. Without something to get out of it, what would you do? You would panic. Notice that the 3 and the 8 does a really good job on an end of day basis keeping you in this stock so that when it went back up, you were like, yay. Now, big down day. The 3 and the 8 still haven't crossed bearish yet. Remember, one day does not make a trend. One day does not make a trend. So, as long as the 3 and the 8 are still good on an end of day basis, leave it alone. Notice that the earnings is starting to fall, but still higher than it was three months ago. Next one. I like FNF. Insurance companies will always make money because people always need insurance. Love the 3-8 crossover that happened on 1-6-2020. Look at that run up. Stock is right at a level of resistance. Look at the prior two days. The wick or the upside of the candle is right at that level of resistance. The stock is having a hard time breaking through that resistance level of 49.22. If I'm not in it, I would wait uh, to see if the stock could go 12 cents higher than that. But remember, if you're not in these stocks yet, be careful buying into any long positions right now. Next one, JNUG, gold, not ready to touch it yet. Look at that level of resistance. Look at that level of support. Look at where the stock's price is, right in the middle. Everybody can tell you what they want to tell you about gold. This is the story. I, here's the story of a golden JNUG. Who's not really breaking out of the trend at all? It's sitting in the really middle. I'm not going to touch it yet. So there we go. How, how cool was that? That was cool, Joey. You like my creativity? You do. Anyway, stocks moving in a channel. Not ready to touch it yet. If I'm ready to wait, if I'm ready, if I'm waiting for gold, let it get out of its own way. Let it break out of that channel. Not ready to touch it yet. What else is in here? Uh, AEMD, another drug biomedical company. You know, big wick at the top. Look at all of that give back. A little bit of a doji cross. Could be bearish because that's a lot of the bear, a lot of selling pressure going on. The 3 and the 8 looks solid, though. 3 and the 8 looks solid. Volume looks good. Earnings looks better than it was three months ago. Just be careful. The stock could be getting tired in this upward move. All right? Just be careful with that. And one other stock, J&J, &J, like that. Beautiful core holding again. Three-month graph, put this on a one-year graph. Ah, maybe not a core holding from that perspective, but the stock is definitely hitting a new high over the last year. Put this back on three months. Watch the volume. Interesting. If you own this stock, notice I got a divergence going. Look at the price of the stock, but look at the volume of the stock. Who owns this? Whoever gave this to me, do you own it? That was Claude. Claude, do you own J&J? &J? If you own Johnson & Johnson, keep in mind the price is going up while volume is going down. That is a bearish divergence. Be careful with the stock. All right, before we go, I'm about done. Before we go, I'm going to go back to the viewers tab. Here's our watch list. Remember at the beginning of the year, you got a long call? 
All right. Um, just be careful on that. You know something? If you're up on that, don't be afraid to take some of that off the table. Um, it's probably going to expire in two weeks, right? The third Friday is probably going to expire in two weeks. Just keep your eye on it. Don't give back all of the money that you've made on the call. All right. Remember we started at the beginning of the year of some of the best stocks going into the year and some of the worst stocks going into the year? That was done on Trending Thursday, 1-2 of 2020. I want to show you something. Here's the watch list that we came up with you. I came up for you for some of the best stocks to look for into going into 2020. I'm going to run this back to that beginning date of 1-2 of 2020. I want to show you how advantageous it is for you to attend these webcasts. I'm going to uh, quick test all of them. Over since 1-2 to right now, these stocks are up in excess of 3%, whereas the market, the Vector Vest Composite, is down slightly. Actually, if you want to make this more for any of you who are not subscribers, let's compare it to the spiders. The spiders are up about a half a percent. The stocks that we presented to you as some of the best stocks for 2020 is up over 3%. Some of these stocks are losing money. ARWR down 34% down 34%. You know something? If you got into all of these stocks and ARWR was down this much, there's no reason in the world why you should ride that stock down that far. Out of the 10 stocks, six stocks are winners, four are losers. I'm going to keep my eye on this list going into the year, but we did the presentation. The first presentation of the year in Trending Thursday was all about some of the best stocks going into the year and some of the worst stocks going into the year. And I want to prove it to you that it's worth it for you to be here and we appreciate you being here. With that said, I'm going to hear. With that said, I want to say thank you for being here. We do appreciate that. If you're brand new, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I want you more so to comment as Joey puts these videos out in the, re in the recorded videos, comment on them. That way we know what we can do better. Tell me you like it. Tell me you don't like it. It doesn't matter, but I need you to comment. Comment on the videos once Joey gets the recordings out. He segments them, so comment on the stories you like, the stories you don't like, and the stories or that you would like to see. All right? Don't forget Facebook. We're also on social media on Facebook every Thursday at 11 o'clock a.m., talking about our mobile app. And everybody who's in this room as a subscriber, you all have access to that mobile app. Use it. And last but not least, don't forget our hot stock panel next Wednesday at 2 p.m. right here on YouTube. With that being said, folks, have an outstanding day. Adios, arrivederci, ciao. Au revoir, sayonara, later.